The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. If you stay with what God said and you don't change your confession, that word is going to work for you because it will not return to you for. Jesus spoke the Word of God, so God gave him the Spirit with no limit. They said, you cannot do anything with this man, Lazarus, because I can, I can smell it. It's stinking. His skin is decomposing. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. The man got up bound feet and head and came to the tomb, the, the door of the tomb, and he said, loose him and let him go. Yes, sir. And they went home that night and celebrated. Amen. So it doesn't make any difference how bad your situation is. Now, how do those, those words work like that well, that's what we're going to get to for you. They're going to work like that for you. All right. The what? The word of God is the most powerful thing that exists. Now you've got to get that in your thinking because that tree may not be in you yet. That's a tree. That's a belief system. I got to put that in me. Remember, we talked Sunday about you can get a tree up in 24 hours because what had happened is the trees in us made us think we had to wait, but you don't have to wait. God lives in the eternal and you and I have eternal life. And so we can operate in the zone of what God lives. And God does not live in a zone of time. Second Peter chapter three and verse eight. One day is with God as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So with God, a thousand years is just like a day. And a day is just like a thousand years. Why? Because with God, there's no time. Hallelujah. And when you operate by faith, you are operating with God. So faith dictates the time not the time that's in the earth because the time that's in the earth is only holding people in its bondage, in its, in its, uh, in its, in, in its hold because the, the, the earth fell. And when it fell, it fell to a place of eternal down to the temporal. And so people are now, everything we think or everything we used to think or used to do, whatever have you, we did it in time. We always thought time. We always thought how long it's going to take me to grow this business or how long it's going to take me to get this healing or how long it's going to take. The doctor said, hey, come on, we can start treatment now. You, you follow what I'm saying? But with God, there's no treatment. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're going to walk with God and walk by faith, you cannot walk under the bondages of, of, of a time master. Time was never designed to control you. It was, you, you were designed to control time. So what? The word of God is the strongest thing or the most powerful thing that exists. Period. 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 
Don't add anything to it. Don't take anything away from it. If you just take that particular phrase right there and just meditate it. It'll change your whole opinion because we can read the word of God and don't think nothing about it. Am I right about it? Next is why. Why the word of God? Genesis chapter one and verse 26. And God said, let us make man after our image, after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Underline all the earth. Let them have dominion. Dominion means rulership, caretakership, ownership, stewardship. It means having authority. Okay? Dominion. Then verse 28. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be what? Fruitful and what else? Multiply and what else? Replenish the earth and what else? Subdue it and have what? Dominion. And he goes through it again. Okay? So, why? Why? Words. Now I'm giving you two main reasons why words. One is that words are given to you to manage the earth. Words are given, were given to Adam to manage the earth. Adam, even in chapter two, named the animals. In the Hebrew, whatever you name, you have authority over. So in this, here is Adam now going to have to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. He's going to take the blessing and turn every place he goes into a garden, the Garden of Eden. Using what? Words. Words. Em- blessing, empowering the prosper. Amen. The blessing, the anointing of God that through which divine favor flows. The blessing, the blessing, the covenant of God that overrides the curse. Because of Adam's sin, was there a curse in the earth? Absolutely. And that curse makes you toil, makes you struggle and so forth. But the covenant of God, the anointing of God gives you sweatless victory. And when Peter said, we've toiled all night and taken nothing, nevertheless, at thy what? Word. What? Whose word? God's word. Look what it did. One catch change the whole economy of the coastline. Why? Words. Because words are key for you to receive your inheritance. I have an inheritance out there. And for me to get that inheritance, go to Romans chapter 10, verse nine. For me to get that inheritance, he says here, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be Say. Now I'm going to have to confess something before I have it. And the word confession comes from homologio, which means to agree with God. We're going to agree with him. And as we agree with him, 
then we're going to see the results of his word manifesting in our life. So I've got to agree with God. I, I can't say I'm going to be healed. Why? Because I'm not agreeing. I'm not agreeing. Look what he said. First Timothy, uh, pardon me. First Peter chapter two, verse 24. He said this, who his own self bear sins in his own body on the tree and we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Come on, help, help me. And by his stripes, we are going to be healed. Got it? Now, what do I have to say? Word. If I say that I'm going to be, am I agreeing? No. And if I don't agree, I don't get my inheritance. I've got to agree. And I guarantee you what's going to happen to you when you agree. Because over in Numbers and chapter 11, pardon me, 13 and verse 30, the uh, Caleb jo Joshua came back, said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. That's what they said. Well, you'd think nothing would happen except somebody just disagreed with him. But go over to Numbers chapter 14 and they took up stones. Well. They took up stones to stone them because of their words. They just agreed with God and I guarantee you, you go down to that hospital and you have something going on and you agree with God in the face of them people. Try it. For you to get it, you're going to have to agree. And it's going to put you, excuse the expression, on front street. You're going to take Jesus public. How about in Jairus' house? Here is Jesus and Jairus said, come my daughter lies, come lay your hands on her, she be healed. And then this woman with the issue of blood came and she said, if I can just touch his clothes, I shall be whole. She made her way through the crowd, touched him and got healed. And then she said, a woman, thy faith has made thee whole. And then they came to Jairus and said, don't trouble the master anymore. Your daughter is dead. Jesus said, no, 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 don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything anything. And he went to the house and he got, opened the door and here's where he announced himself. She's not dead, she's just asleep. And what do you think the people in the house start doing? They start laughing at him because he said what God said. And I'm telling you right now, the reason why most Christians don't move into this dimension of getting their inheritance is because they're a little bit intimidated by Aunt Lucy and Uncle Joe, and they won't say what God said. And if you don't say what God said, you won't get what God's got for you. Boy, I'm preaching better than you say it. Amen, mate. <laughs> Jesus spoke the words of God and because of that, God gave him the spirit with no limit. Amen. Am I preaching or am I preaching? Faith and confession. First was what? That the word of God is what? The most powerful thing that exists. If you can just write that down, most powerful thing that exists, period. Period, say period. Period. Put a exclamation point. That's it, don't add nothing to it. There's nothing more powerful than the word of God. 
Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. Here is Jesus going with him to the other side. He falls asleep and then the storm comes and they can't get the water out in time. The boat starts sinking. Master, don't you care that we're about to die? He raises up and said, peace, come on, be still. And there was a great calm. He turned to them. He said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they said, what manner of who? Man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him. What in, what in the natural can stop a storm? Nothing, nothing can stop it. And what people think is that money is the most powerful thing. Are you kidding? Here's what the man said over in 2 Kings and chapter 7 and verse 1. When they were broke, they were eating hog head cheese. Uh, they were eating pig feet and trying to live off of hardly anything. And this man stands up and say, tomorrow about this time, with words, words, tomorrow about this time, it's going to be plenty. You're going to be eating sirloin. You're going to be eating, come on. You're going to be eating good. Come on. He spoke what? Words and words stripped the money out of the people who were the enemy and brought it into their camp. Now, don't you tell me that words are not stronger than money. You don't need money. You need a knowledge of your word. You need confession. And if you can get confession, your business will take off. Now, don't shout me down because I'm preaching good, man. You don't need to borrow another dime. What you need to do is say, money coming to me now. Come on now. Come on, give God some praise because Leroy brought you a revelation. You think money is more powerful than words? What? Money? I mean, words are the most powerful. Most powerful what? Thing that exists. Period. What? Why? Because we got to manage this earth. Returning jails into boarding schools in Jesus' name. Look what started happening. You can change cities with words. Now, over in Genesis, Genesis chapter 11, you've got a series of scriptures there to talk about these men and they were going to build a statue or a tower, pardon me, and build it up to heaven. Now, these were not full gospel businessmen. These were devil worshipers. But when God said in his word, let's go down and see what the children of men have built it and let me confound their speech. Satan knows this trick. He knows this thing. He knows if he can get him speaking the same thing, he can build him a tower. Now, people think they're helping you. You know, they think they're really describing you. you no, know, we always have problems in this city. Uh, you know, the devil is busy. Yeah, he's busy on you because you're busy. You're busy talking about how busy he is. The Bible says the devil is under your foot. Now, why don't you say that? Oh, no, we can change big cities. 
And I'm just saying, somehow we lost the revelation. It just flew away, just went out the window. Now, the thing that makes you, it's so important for you is because you have someone and something and a, a whole kingdom behind your words. Yes, Satan doesn't have that. He doesn't have that. And here he was, he was in 2 Kings chapter 6 and and he's busy telling Israel the secrets of how Syria was going to attack because your prophet is needed. Amen. Remember what I said about the apostle and prophet. They are the ones that are custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven in their generation. So that's part of my job is to bring you new revelation. So what happens is... Now, here's this king heard about this prophet who's down there telling all the secrets. So he goes, sends a whole army after him. One man. One man. That's why Jezebel was not after business leaders. She was after the prophet. Because if you can shut that prophet's mouth... So what happened is they came down and when they came down, of course, you know what happened. Um, they surrounded him by night. You can't sneak up on prophets. And, and they surrounded him by night and he got up early in the morning. I mean, if he was given the secrets to which way the army was going to attack Israel. Don't you think he knew which way the army was going to attack him? I mean, it just makes sense. No, okay, so what happened? Gehazi, his carnal servant, woke up. Now, I'm just not calling him names. I'm calling him names because eventually he showed himself. See? So... He got up, he saw, saw the armies and said, Master, what are we going to do now? He said, there'll be more with us than be with them. See? And you are free to say that if you fear the Lord. Because over in Psalm chapter 34 and verse 4, he said, the angels of the Lord encamp around about those that fear the Lord. So you don't even be, be concerned. Angels are around you right now. What you need to do is put them to work. So how? How? And that's what I read in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation, Salvation deliverance, healing, whatever you want. That's how. So the biggest thing Satan knows is that he's got what belongs to most Christians behind the gates. But Jesus tells us in Matthew 16 that the gates of hell. If you know the story of Samson, he ripped the gates off the hinges. So the devil's got your stuff. And he's hoping you don't agree with God. Do you hear what I'm saying? He will try to put people around you that you don't agree with God. Don't say that. Joseph had a dream and he just spoke it, didn't he? He said, this is what I dreamed. And the first time they let him get away with it, but the next time he said that, the devil tried to close in on him. Even his daddy rejected him. But he didn't give up on what he said. 
Nobody can stop you if you are seeing and saying. Well, praise the Lord. I trust that you enjoyed that teaching. Now it's called Faith for the Impossible. I taught this on one of our faith refreshers. We have it during the winter months and we have to refresh our faith. You know, you got to keep faith fed. Praise God, because faith is a servant. But I talk about faith to do the impossible. And in this, I talked about the fact that the Word of God is the most powerful thing that exists. Isn't that something? Now, because it is that powerful, for it to do what God's called it to do, you have to believe it. Once you believe it, it releases the power for its performance. Isn't that powerful? But it's the most powerful thing that exists. The Word of God is holding planets into place. Just right now. Praise God. I call it the all-controlling factor, the Word of God. So you need to learn how to not only speak the Word of God, but believe the Word of God and see it work on your behalf. The Word of God is the most powerful thing that exists. Well, that's all we have for you this time. We're going to see you next time. Until then, keep walking by faith. If you stay with what God said and you don't change your confession, that Word is going to work for you because it will not return to you for. Today's dynamic message, Faith for the Impossible, is filled with life-changing truths that can turn your circumstances around and bring you into the best life God has for you. But you've only heard a portion of the message. To get the series in its entirety on MP3 or CD, on MP4 or DVD, order today by calling 1-800-711-9327 or go online at billwinston.org. When you correct your words, you will correct your life. Get your copy of this essential teaching, Faith for the Impossible, today. Hello, this is Bill Winston, and I'd like to share with you a new book that I've just written. It's called Miracles in the Marketplace. Now, traditionally, we thought of miracles happening when people get sick and get a miracle or something's wrong with them physically, they get a miracle. Now, miracles can happen in education, in government, in business, in economics, anywhere. And you can have a miracle in your life. We're up against things and challenges today that, let me tell you, the natural solutions just won't do it. We need a miracle. Well, this book develops not only a miracle mindset, but how you can produce miracles in your life. It is a phenomenal book. Powerful. Praise God. You need to get it today. This is Bill Winston saying God bless you and keep walking by faith. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.